everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. I'm here with Josh. We're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and uh, you had spent some time living in Jerusalem. Um, describe that. Like, like when were you there? How long were you there? Uh, why were you uh, living and working in mm-hmm. that city? Yeah, so we were, uh, we lived there um, from 2015 to 2018, so three, three years from January to January. Um, we were there living in Jerusalem. We lived inside the old city of Jerusalem, had the oh, opportunity wow. to live there, which is kind of a rare a rare opportunity. I uh, wow. lived there for three years um, in the Christian quarter, if you're familiar with the old city. It's mm-hmm. Christian quarter, small Armenian quarter, Jewish quarter, and then the Muslim quarter, which is the biggest of the four sections in the old city. Mm-hmm. Um, we were there working in uh, humanitarian aid. Um, we worked throughout the region, uh, but most of my work took me into uh, the Palestinian territories in the West Bank uh, and Gaza. Um, but we were headquartered, mm-hmm. working from Jerusalem um, primarily, mm-hmm. uh, and like literally our where we lived in the old city, of course, is like right on the seam between east and west Jerusalem, which mm-hmm. is yeah. was like the traditional um, dividing line after mm-hmm. the 1967 uh, Six Day War. Jerusalem, the old city, is is kind of a is kind of a um, place of its own within the larger yeah. Jerusalem. I mean, of course, Jerusalem itself is is a big uh, metropolitan. Mm-hmm. Um, area, but um, the old city is almost a square kilometer with a population of between thirty and forty thousand uh, people oh, living okay. in it. So like very, very wow. tightly <laughs> packed in there, and yeah. old cobblestone streets and history every time you turn around. So wow. um, yeah, that's where we mm-hmm. lived. We had um, two of our uh, two of our three children there uh, okay. in Jerusalem. Really, kind of an amazing and crazy and difficult place to live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, okay, because that would be like when you when you moved. I'm 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 just speculating. But were you? Did you ever feel pressure to take some type of um, Christian Zionist stance um, or or something to that effect? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like kind of walk us through that transition mm-hmm. of, of moving over and, and those pressures. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know that I ever like felt any kind of pressure there. Obviously, it's something that's always in the back of your mind because it's such a conflicted area, mm-hmm. um, deep, deep history uh, of the conflict uh, going going back um, many, many uh, generations. But where we were, kind of where we were situated, we could uh, we were in the Christian quarter in the old city, like I said, um, which is Christian Arab uh, population. Uh, which is the majority of the Christians in in mm. Israel and Palestine area. You can't live there without feeling the without feeling the tensions, and there were waves yeah, of yeah. of unrest and and difficulty at times. Um, nothing too serious uh, while we were there, but but still, it's always kind of there. It's kind of part of the fabric, um, even if it's not like like always being acted upon. It's always you know it's always kind of there. I know it's a big question. Um, within the conservative Anabaptist world, like right, um, yeah. there's pretty mm-hmm. big uh, differences of, opi- of opinion. Like, what is what? Is, what should be our response to the state of Israel? Um, there are some who feel very strongly that you know, as a country, we need to be supporting them. As a people, we need to be supporting you know Zionism. And then there are others who really take a pretty strong opposing stance to that. Living there, like, really, you come out of it with just the conviction that any kind of easy narrative. <laughs> Any kind of simplistic narrative just mm-hmm. just really doesn't really doesn't cut it. And so, I think what I would say, um, kind of some things that I would say to you know, like both sides of the issue, uh, just based on my own experience. First of all, I think it's important that we appreciate the genuine connections that are there. It's really hard to, mm-hmm. you know, to see like two thousand year old, you know, synagogues, um, and not appreciate like ruins of those synagogues and not appreciate oh, okay. like, like the deep kind of rootedness of the Jewish people in, you know, in the land. Uh, example, like we were, it, just, it gets at the kind of the deep history that's there. Um, we were, we would often like Saturday evening, you know, pack a picnic lunch and go out in the grassy areas outside mm-hmm. the old city to, to eat. And like soon after we were there, I forget how long it was, um, we were just kind of relaxing there in the, in the grass. and. You know, all of a sudden you come across these kind of caves in the wall, uh, like in the city wall. Um, oh, what are these, right? So you kind of look around, and then you find this plaque, and like, oh yeah, these are tombs like dating back to the first temple period. Like that depth of history makes you look, it really kind of plays with your perception of time, right? You think yeah. of American history, you know, like 1776, oh, that's like, like long ago. <laughs> it, it, like in terms of like the history of, you know, the, the Holy Land, it's like, it's like nothing, right? Yeah. So I, I think... T- First of all, to appreciate that connection. And also, the second thing I would say is to 
really take seriously the extent to which Christianity has been implicated in, has mm -hmm. been complicit with anti-Semitism over the years. Really, really terrible um, kind of legacy there, frankly. And it is very, the scars are very, very deep in, in Jewish memory. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'll <laughs> you know, never forget going to the Yad Vashem, which is their, mm -hmm. their memorial museum for the, for the Holocaust, recommended, you know, you go there if you ever get the chance to visit. And, you know, in the section, in the room on anti-Semitism, you know, which ultimately, of course, culminates with, you know, Hitler and the gas chamber, um, it begins with, like, quotes from, like, church fathers, you know, very, very um, negative view uh, of the Jewish people that just get, keeps mm -hmm. getting, you know, perpetuated through as, you know, Christianity becomes a political force, right, mm -hmm. and, 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 mm -hmm. and all that, and um, so, so, so many instances of that, and... Like, like that's there, and that's something that we yeah. really need to take seriously um, when we think about questions of you know Zionism and the land and, and the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. um, to the people who would kind of take the opposite stance, that who would, who would be less inclined to think that therefore we need to you know support you know politically the, the mm -hmm. state of Israel, who would take that position um, mm -hmm. and be kind of anti you know the idea that the Palestinians have any kind of say in, in what goes on there. I would say this, don't, don't adopt any kind of view that you couldn't justify or explain to your Palestinian, Palestinian brother or sister in Christ, right? Who are regularly mm -hmm. um, discriminated against, um, profiled at checkpoints in the law. I mean, the, the racism, it, it's, you really don't have to be there long to really see how mm -hmm. deeply seated the, the racism um, the prejudice, the animosity, the tension that's there, they face that, right? And they're often the ones that they know, I, I, from my experience, um, of course not all of them respond, you know, with, mm -hmm. you know, Christ-like love and nonviolence. but like for the most part, uh, especially those that I've become close to in my time there, really seen powerful examples of enemy love. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they, they know who their enemy is, you know, it's, wow. and, and, and they are called to, to love and to um, not and to return, you know, good for evil. So, and, and even you know, even in Gaza, for, like there's a very, very, very small, um, you know, Christian population there. So whenever like wow. you know Israel is shelling, you know, Gaza for whatever reason, if you think it's justified or not, remember that there are Christian brothers and sisters there. And of course, we should care about any life, right? But like, right, but like yeah, be, be yeah, able to sure. justify your theological ideas, you know, to to your brothers and sisters. Um, and and frankly, you know. There, there's also a stream of, of Judaism um, that's not accepted very well in mainstream Israeli Jewish culture, but who also accept um, you know Christ as you know as Messiah as Lord and all that. The relationships there between 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 um, you know, Jewish Christians, if we, if we can use that designation, and mm -hmm. and you know Palestinian Christians is it's it's a it's a fraught relationship and and something wow. we I think need to pray about and think about. I, I think more deeply. Like it, the, the the tensions are very nuanced. And then also. If you're going to make a claim about, you know, like God's chosen people and, and all that, that, that claim, even in Scripture, never exempted the people of Israel, the children of Israel in, you know, in the Hebrew Scriptures, from upholding justice and equity and righteousness, right? And, mm -hmm. and if anything, it was, I mean, it was always a call to greater righteousness. The way I see it sometimes played out is that, well, whatever, kind of whatever Israel, do, Israel does, we need to support it if we want God's blessing, right? You know, yeah. and there's this yeah, yeah. big stream yeah. within, like, especially Christian evangelicalism and, and you know, the Christian right in America that um, we often, I think, as a people, <laughs> kind of go along with. And, and I, you know, there's, there's some definite thing dangerous there. That's kind of what I have to say on that. Yeah. And it's a yeah. big, it's a big, messy topic. Ooh, and, uh, big ball of yarn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, however you approach it, you know, it's, it's, it's a very um, flammable issue. So uh, I wow. kind of try to speak um, from, ex from experience. I think in, in everything is you can be quick to hear and slow to speak. Don't assume that God can't do something or, or that you fit God's way of working in the world within, yeah. within your own ideological yeah. framework. So we're doing this you know, based on your personal experience of, right. of living there, so can you give us a, a story of, of a formative experience, like yeah. something that, that deeply impacted you in your time there? So it's not so much a, a story, or it, it's a story, um, but mm -hmm. one of the times that I was in Gaza, um, I forget it was first or second or what, what time it was, I remember just being deeply, deeply moved, or deeply, deeply aware of 
kind of my social status in the global scheme of things. Hmm. Um, you know, I am working there because I can. It's interesting to me. Mm-hmm. But I have a, I have a, you know, I'm being supported you know, in doing it. It's, I'm being employed to work there. But I can, anytime I want to, I can leave. I can come, come back home. There's a family business that I could potentially get involved in. I can pursue, you know, graduate education. I, I have all these, I have a passport where I can go kind of wherever I want to in the world. I don't typically think of myself as like having elevated social status in the American context. But like in Gaza, where it is landlocked, it is sea locked. Um, 25 miles long, at the widest, five miles wide, and they're and just realizing that there are young people, you know, my age, but also I'm you know getting up there, <laughs> but, <laughs> sure. but but there there are people there there are young people growing up who never had who have no hope of ever seeing any of the world outside of that 25 by f- by five at the most, virtually unlivable. I mean, it's it's. Every every year, there's you know there's talk about how you know Gaza is on the brink of collapse. Like it's just no longer sustainable. Most of the water is dirty. Um, only several hours of electricity a day, and it, like there's no political solution. Economically, just devastated. And I don't know, like that just really kind of um, I don't know that it shook me. It mm-hmm. just gave me perspective and and helped me see um, just by virtue of being born <laughs> with a U.S. passport, you know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what kind of opportunities that opens up for you mm-hmm. um, in the larger scheme of things, in, in, in kind of a global perspective. It's hard to get that perspective, you know. It, it seems like that p- part of the world is often in the news for the wrong right. reasons, you know, the latest right. conflict, the latest whatever attack, right. what so forth. When we see those things, you know, what are ways that we can respond? What's a proper perspective mm-hmm. we can have, regardless of, you know, everybody's mm-hmm. differing opinions, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of different yeah. opinions watching this, but what's some ways we can bring some clarity and some, maybe some Jesus attitude, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> to, yeah. to, you know, when we see these things in the news, because right. it is kind of disturbing, you know, right. regardless. Like it's, yeah, it's a good question, and I, I, I really don't feel like I have a whole lot of, like, really insightful <laughs> um, something, perspective to bring. One of the things, if anything, kind of the emotion that I felt living in Jerusalem, and especially during times of turmoil, mm-hmm. was just a kind of helplessness. Like, here I am coming from the States. I'm getting introduced to these political conflicts these, this situation mm-hmm. has been just in, embedded for so long and like coming away with just the feeling of helplessness like you look at the disparity of reporting and you know this is nothing new in you know american news like you know polarization but like you look at like how it's reported in you know palestinian media versus how it's reported in israeli media it's just it's a different story right like what what actually happened and so like e- even like it calls into question your ability to even understand right like what like what is actually going on here so i don't know like i would just <laughs> it's not clarifying the question at all but it, i mean just <laughs> ha- like that that kind of helpless yeah. helplessness but i think being again being quick to hear um slow to speak it's easy to come into these things especially if you have preformed ideas well this is what happened you know hamas is doing this and, and you know so israel has the right to do this and so and, and then you miss the complexity that's there you miss the the, the human the human element that's there um always always you know if you're talking about jesus perspective you know recognize the tragedy of conflict of war of death um, regardless of what you think is justified and what's not yeah. um so that's, yeah, I would say that's that's the biggest thing. But also, like, people think about, you know, the land there, especially Jerusalem. Jerusalem is particularly hard. Like, sometimes we we could, you know, we just needed to escape to, like, you know, the, 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 the coastal cities, you know, like Tel Aviv <laughs> yeah. and Haifa and those. Just to, like, Jerusalem is very intense, like, because it's wow. so deeply embedded in religion. You have Islam, you have Christianity, you have... Um, Judaism, obviously, the three major players there. But also recognize that it's not always, you know, Molotov cocktails and you know, tear gas. <laughs> like, yeah, um, yeah. there are other realities. And I would just recommend if you ever, if you ever visit, I know tourism is a big thing in, in Israel. Um, if you ever visit, like, you know, spend some time on the other side of the wall, um, wherever your political, uh, you know, sympathies yeah. lie. Like, spend yeah. some time on the other side of the wall. In most, in most cases, for our people, it's, you know, see the land of the Bible and, like, mm-hmm. and all that. Um, but, you know, spend some time, um, you know, in Bethlehem. Spend some, if you can, spend some time in a refugee camp, like a Palestinian refugee camp. And spend some time with, with uh, your brothers and sisters, um, your, yeah. your fellow bro- uh, brothers and sisters in Christ there, because um, they have... Um, 
you know, diff- they occupy a diff- difficult space. And I just mm-hmm. want to use this platform, I guess, to speak speak for them to raise awareness, I guess, of their of their perspective on it. Kind of makes me want to go back yeah. again, you know, because it, it's been a few years since yeah. I was over there, and yeah. and, it, and it was very eye opening. Yeah. You just see, whoa, like this is yeah. really complicated and right. very rough. Like this is just really hard for everybody. No easy answers, and once you start yeah. untangling, like you know, what is what is justice here? I mean, mm-hmm. frankly, I, I, I like, um, you know, I have my ideas about you know, and educate yourself on history and all that, but um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's. Um, it's, it's really difficult, and um, yeah. especially coming in from the outside, I think it's important to um, come with a level of humility and willingness to listen. Thanks so much for taking the time yeah, to sure. share. And yeah. yeah, sometime, I don't know, it's kind of random actually, yeah. a little bit of a story, but when I was, uh, when you were injury, somebody I didn't even know you were there, and mm. I like ran into you on the yeah. street, and I'm like, whoa, what are you doing here? Like, I had no, you know, it was b- uh, bizarre. So anyway, it's been fun to talk about yeah. that and hear more about yep. your time there. Sure. So.